Casey Kasem, and I'm bringing you the fourth episode of Get Real with Casey Kasem. On this episode, I sat down with Matthew Betts. He's a physical therapist that you might know from his work over with Ball Blast Football, where he does an injury tracker. He also does the Red Shirts Dynasty podcast, and he does tons of work with the fantasy footballers. He does the DFS pod, and he has an injury-focused podcast with them as well. You can find Matthew on Twitter at the Fantasy PT. Hope you really enjoy this episode because I had a great time getting to know Matthew. And if y'all don't mind, can you rate, review, and just tell your friends about this podcast because I really want to spread the word and get people interested in learning about other people in the fantasy football industry. Also, we are part of the DAF Network. Follow the Twitter account for this podcast at GetReal underscore pod. You can follow me on Twitter at the Casey Kasem. You can find my writing over with Fighting Chance Fantasy and with the fantasy footballers. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Yeah. yeah so, thanks for having um, me on. No problem. I thought, like, you were one of the first people I thought to ask to come on because what you do is so different than what a lot of people do in the fantasy football community. So, yeah, thought for sure. A little bit of extra insight into a different world would be pretty cool. Yeah, totally. Um, um, all right. So, Matthew Betts is who I have with me at the moment. Um, and he's a really rad dude. So if you're not already following Matthew Betts, I'm going to give you all his information before the podcast starts, but we'll get to it as we go as well. Um, Matthew, I was just wondering, since uh, this podcast has to do a lot with um, getting into the fantasy football industry and just kind of getting to know you as well as a person, can you tell everybody exactly what your job is outside of the fantasy football community? What do you do for a living? Yeah, for sure. So first off, thank you so much, Casey, for having me on. Uh, it's been awesome to get to know you better in the last uh, few weeks. Working together for the ballers and, and reading your work has been great. So super excited to join you tonight. Uh, but yeah, for me, I am a sports physical therapist by day. So I am a, a PT in the clinic seeing these types of injuries that we talk about in terms of fantasy football um, every season, right? ACL injuries, ankle sprains, concussions, all those things I'm seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so a few years ago, um, I noticed that there was no one outside of the name Stefania Bell that was doing what she was doing and covering injuries in the football space. And now we've seen a lot of other you know, doctors, um, trainers, physical therapists pop up into that space. And so I saw that opportunity and I was like, oh, I'm going to go for it and see what happens um, and, and put myself out there to write injury content and relate it to fantasy. And so it's been awesome to kind of marriage the two uh, passions that I have into this cool hobby. Yeah, that's really rad um, to be able to do that with what you do and take your expertise into the fantasy football realm. Did you always think that you were going to do something like that with your job and with fantasy? Did you ever was it just clicked one day or was it something that you had thought about for a while and then decided to, to dive into it? Yeah, it wasn't anything that I kind of thought of, I think, early on. But I, I mean, I've been a huge sports fan my entire life, played sports growing up all through high school and college. And I've just been a fantasy football like fiend for years. And so, you know, it, once once the passion kept growing for that, I was like, all right, now now's the time. Um, I spent a couple of years working and uh, doing a residency program. So I was just so, so busy when I first got out of school. And then I finally got time where things kind of settled into like normal life. And I was like, all right, now's the time to jump in and go for it. And, and ever since then, it's been awesome. That's all. Yeah. And you're all over the place. I know that you're the injury expert over with the fantasy footballers and you do stuff with ball blasts as well. Um, can you tell me a little bit about you with ball blast, exactly what your role over there is and how things go? Uh, Cause I, I know those chicks are really awesome. So I know that's a good community over there. Uh, can you just give me a little bit of insight into that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, earlier this year, and this is kind of a sneak behind the curtain here. A lot of people don't know this. Um, Kate, Kate Majuk, follow her on Twitter at FF Ball Blast. She is uh, one of the owners of Ball Blast Football, along with her wife, Michelle, myself, and Matt Okada. And she and I had been kind of chatting off and on for probably about a year about like, let's make this thing happen. Like, let, let's do this. Let's create our own uh, our own brand and kind of, you know, venture off from the big box names and, and try to make a, our name for ourselves in the space. And I was kind of hesitant because we had our own podcast, Okada and I, uh, and we had John Helmkamp a part of that. I was doing a lot of work, obviously, seeing patients in the clinic and also kind of doing my own thing with the ballers. And I was like, I don't know, like, it's just, I don't know if I have time. And she kept pestering me and pestering me, and pestering me until I finally was like, all right, you have enough passion and the, the fire and energy that I want to have in a business partner. So let's do this thing. So the four of us 
co-own Ball Blast Football. Uh, we have two podcasts in our podcast network. We, of course, have the Ball Blast flagship show, which is Kate uh, and Michelle doing their show, and then Okada and myself doing the Red Shirts Dynasty podcast. So we kind of have your redraft, your Dynasty-focused um, stuff as far as the podcast. And then we have a site, articles, rankings, all that sort of stuff on there as well. So one of the, the four co-owners there at Ball Blast Football. It's really awesome. Yeah, I, I knew that was a, a newer thing. Um, I've been following you since Red Shirts first came into existence. And I know that I was hardcore listening to it when it first came out, when it was its inaugural, you know. Oh, man, those are the days. Yeah, those are the days. <laughs> what, made, what made you decide that podcasting was on one of the routes that you wanted to go? Yeah, it's just, I mean, there's nothing better than talking football with good people. And to me, like the fantasy space is just so, so unique. Like, I mean, I can't think of another thing that exists where you just have thousands of random people that you probably will never see in in person or hopefully you do, but maybe never see in person (laughs) that you just get to interact with and talk to them uh, about football and learn from other people about football and learn about them as people. So, you know, some of my like closest friends that I talk to on a daily basis are people that I met just through, you know, fantasy Twitter and podcasting and all those sort of things. Um, but in reality, what I, what I love about it is it's just a, a unique platform to be able to get your voice out there literally and, and figuratively. Um, and for people that are super busy, you know, writing articles all the time takes so, so much effort and time. And, and I love that, too. But to me, sitting down with someone for a half hour or an hour and talking football, I mean, there's there's nothing better. Exactly. I mean, I know there's a lot of podcasts that are, you know, coming to the forefront right now. But it's really refreshing to hear you guys. Um, how did you guys decide that you guys were going to be the team that got together to do the podcast? What's that for the the red shirts show? Yeah, for the red shirt shirts uh, show in particular. How did you figure yeah. that one out? So, so the brand red shirts has gone through a bit of a, a transformation. <laughs> for years. So about two and a half years ago, um, I was writing for a site the fantasy authority, which shout out to them, like super, super thankful that they kind of gave me a chance to put my work out there. Um, and, and they sort of had like a dynasty show, but they were like, we need, we need a group of people to do the redraft show. And so Okada was kind of the the leader at the time. He was like, Hey, I got a a show you want to join. And I was like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. So it was me, him and Kent Wyrock, who now uh, works for PFF, which is awesome. And so the three of us, we had our thing, we had our show and over the years, life got crazy, right? So Kent, uh, had his his first child, so shout out to he and his wife. That's awesome. But he was like, "Man, I'm so busy. I need to step away." And Okada were like, "You know, do we fold? Do we keep going?" And so he and I kept going. And then another year later, here we are now with kind of the transformation with Ball Blast. So that's kind of how it all started. Um, and we have since obviously branched out from TFA, the Fantasy Authority. But I, I really can't recommend those people enough, and recommend their brand enough. Like such such good people. Um, that again, like I said, I'll always be so thankful that they gave me a chance to write and, and talk about football. Yeah, it is so awesome to hear everybody come on here and talk about like who kind of helped them out throughout their whole career and how they got to be where they are based on these other sites. And and a lot of them are getting shout outs on here because um, a lot of people, you know, you, you start off at these really awesome places and then you just kind of keep growing your brand. And uh, we've been talking a lot about brand, too. And I know that you're not the only person who who does what you do, but I think that you're one of those people that people enjoy listening to. So I know that I searched your name today on Spotify and got like so many podcasts that had you on as an injury expert. How do you hook up with those sites or those podcasts? Do they contact you? Do you contact them? Is it a little bit of both? Well, I really appreciate you saying that because every now and then I'll listen back to a show where like, I, like I'll drop a stat and I'm like, Oh, I forget what that was. Like, let me go back and listen real quick. And I absolutely despise my voice. So thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> no, but, I do the same thing. To answer your question, um, usually it's just connections made um, across different platforms, whether it be like writing for the same site or, you know, interacting on Twitter or whatever it is. But usually most people will reach out to me and just say, hey, man, do you have, you know, 45 minutes or an hour to come on the show and and talk about injuries? Um, I always joke that, like, you know, the football season for me doesn't really start uh, September 1st, like most people. It is like July 15th because that's when training camps are starting and, and injuries are happening like crazy. I'm writing up the injury report in the ballers, uh, you know, UDK and everyone wants to know what's the scoop. Like, can I trust this player or not? And so I, I'm really busy guesting on other people's shows throughout August and absolutely love it. And like I said, it's just such, you know, a good platform to meet other people. So, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. 
That is, I mean, super awesome. That's how, how I've met a lot of people too, is just guesting on the shows. You get to know a whole lot of, of people. And I know that you are writing, you know, your season starts earlier than everybody else's with the COVID situation that we're going through now. Did you see an influx in information that you needed to put out there? Did you see more uh, people asking you questions because of, you know, the situation at hand? Yeah, I think so. I mean, normally we all have access to the same information. We just kind of digest it differently. So when I see a report, usually I'm able to read through the tea leaves a little bit better than maybe the next person. And it's just because of my background and kind of knowing injury history. But without preseason games, seeing players on the field, without training camp practice reports, because the media wasn't really allowed into a lot of different um, practices and those sort of things, like I was basically going off of, okay, looking back at my notes from last season, and looking at players that had either surgery in the offseason or recovering from injury from last year or had a, an injury in training, they're on their own throughout the offseason and trying to project that forward. It was the most challenging August and, and late <laughs> July that I've had since I've started doing this because the information was so limited. And so really, it was a challenge. But yes, to answer your question, a lot more people, I think, were reaching out because there were less, you know, Roto World blurbs and less Twitter updates, but people needed to know what's up with Big Ben's elbow? Like, can I trust him this year or not? And thankfully, we got that one right so far. It looks pretty good. Uh, but yes, it's it's been a really challenging couple months. I can only imagine that. I mean, it seems like it's hard enough just doing like the normal writing stuff and then to have that on top of it, not knowing exactly what's going on. Um, and, and you were talking about working with the ballers and, you know, I do too now. But uh, um You've been an integral part of their DFS over there. You, you co-host the podcast, the DFS podcast. What got you involved in the DFS aspect of the whole fantasy football thing? Yeah, so up until this year, I've been a relatively casual DFS player. Like I'll play, a, you know, a few lineups each week, and like I'll, I'll throw a few dollars on each one, and not that not that serious about it, but. Um, I've just found like throughout the years, my passion and love for not just football, but like kind of peer to peer, um, like challenges, like, can I beat you in this sport or can I beat you in this game? And can I build unique lineups to do it? It's just been so intriguing. And, um, when Andy, Mike and Jason came to me this summer and asked, Hey man, do you have the availability? And are you interested in hosting the DFS podcast with Kyle, our, our fearless editor, the Borgogan, uh, he's the man. Um, I was like, yes, of course, let's, let's do this. And ever since then, I mean, I wish I could, I wish I could say this with confidence, how much money I'm playing on DraftKings every week now, <laughs> but it's just so, so fun. And you just analyze the game like at such a deeper level that I feel like I'm learning so much more about not just the offensive side, but also defensive side too, because you're sure, you know, you're, you're looking at the matchups, you're looking at tendencies, you're looking at all these things. So it's just been um, a blast and in doing it. You know, the the sentiments around kind of what I've heard feedback wise was like the DFS show for the ballers kind of lost like the ballers brand, so to speak, over the years. And, and being able to have Kyle, who's the editor, and he's like such a hard worker behind the scenes, get mm -hmm. the chance to be uh, the forefront and the, the voice of the DFS show along with me has been so awesome to see. So, yeah, it's been fun and really can't thank those guys enough for that crazy opportunity. So it's been fun. Yeah, that's a really awesome uh, opportunity that you have there. When they came to you with that um, with that idea, were you? How were your feelings? Were you nervous? Were you super hyped up? What? How did you feel? And then how are you now that you've actually gotten comfortable with being, you know, a part of the DFS over there? Yeah, if you go back and listen to like the first one or two episodes. Um, you can tell there's growing pains for sure between Kyle and I because we had never been on a microphone together. Like we've talked off and on, but never actually podcasted. And like as I'm sure you know, and, and listeners know too, like you can tell, you can definitely tell when people are comfortable and when they're nervous. And so, yes, the first couple episodes were a learning curve for both of us. We were trying to figure out each other's style. We were still kind of understanding like who's going to take the lead, who's kind of the secondary man, and that that just flows so well in a podcast. Um, but yeah, it took a, a couple episodes to hit the ground running, but I think we're, we're super confident in what we're doing now because I don't know about you, but like the best thing about doing this is when people reach out to you and they're like, Hey, thanks so much for helping with that call this week or that start, start sit decision or telling me to play this guy in DFS. And we've had a ton of that on the show. So it's been really, really awesome to see. And I think just doing that, like we're having so much fun that at this point it just feels like it's, you know, second nature. That that's awesome. Yeah, I listen to you guys. You guys really do help um, set lineups and uh, win money. So I I'm appreciative to both of you guys. There you um, go. 
you know that's what's up and and it's good that you guys have that thing out there that like people are are you know more prone to listen to it because it has the fantasy footballers attached to it um how important do you think having kind of kind of a mentory system with them um having them there you know have they helped you out with you know the whole podcasting thing did they give you any tips or tricks uh, not too much in terms of like the actual on mic presence. Um, again, if you go back and listen to like the first ever red shirts show, I remember it very vividly at the time. Uh, my wife and I were living in an apartment. I was set up on a laptop. Um, didn't have a mic stand, like such an amateur, such an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so, so excited about it. But you, you know, over the years, like you kind of learn and you understand how it works and you kind of understand timing and how to deliver what you're trying to say in both a knowledgeable, but also super entertaining way. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill that I feel like I'm definitely still working on. And honestly is something that I think Andy, Mike and Jason do better than anyone in the industry can do. I'm sure you're the same way, but when you listen to the show, like you just laugh the entire time. And so, you know, they haven't really talked to me a lot about like that kind of thing, but um, over the course of the years, listening to other people's shows, them and, and others, et cetera. But uh, that has been kind of how I've learned to be better and more comfortable on the microphone because no doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's so weird the first couple of times you do yeah, it. <laughs> it really is. And, and I know that some of the people that will be listening to this want to start their own podcast, but they're a little nervous about it. They don't know exactly what to do or how to, how to do it. Do you have any advice for people who are brand new to podcasting have never done it before and kind of want some sort of push to get them involved in this whole thing? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the biggest thing is just kind of being uncomfortable or be, sorry, being comfortable with being uncomfortable <laughs> the first time. Or both. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Or both. Hey, whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it is. It's a little like intimidating and you just feel awkward the first couple of times. But, you know, we'd be lying if it, we were saying that we never felt that way. I definitely have have felt that way. And a lot of other people have said the same thing when they start a podcast. So, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is don't be worried about what other people think. There's going to be people that disagree with what you're saying and think that you sound silly or your takes are bad or whatever but there's going to be like three times as many people that think your takes are awesome and you're a cool person and all this sort of stuff so ignore them don't even worry about it you're having a conversation with your best friend casey like i am tonight yeah, and, go. and things good things happen so yeah don't worry about it do it it's it's a ton of fun so if anyone's like yeah maybe not no definitely do it for sure see that's good advice exactly if somebody would have told me that when i first started because i was freaking out but really you're just talking you know if, yep. you're talking to other people that like the same thing you do and if people listen they listen if they don't they don't but you know they should be listening to everybody's podcast <laughs> uh, us too, <laughs> <One let's> repeat. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so because I'm jumping all over the place here, I don't really have a set in stone like list. I kind of have like little things jotted down, but I, we were talking about writing earlier and how exactly did you get started in the whole writing situation? Uh, where did you start off? Did somebody come to you? Did you go to somebody else? How, how did that come about? Yeah, I contacted uh, the, the group over at the fantasy authority, which is where the red shirts brand started. Um, I've been listening to their dynasty show with, Travis May, Justin McCaslin, two really good people in the industry. And I heard them say at the end of one of their dynasty shows, we're looking for writers, you know, contact us here if you're interested. And I was like, oh, what the heck? So I did it. And I heard back like a day later from Justin. He was like, hey, man, you just mind writing up a quick sample for us to see what kind of writer you are. And mm -hmm. we'll if it works out like great and we'll bring you on. And I was like, yeah, sure. So the next day I read up a, an injury profile for Alshon Jeffrey, just going on about his hamstring injury history and all these sort of things. And, and they were like, yeah, that's perfect. So come on in and, and join the team. So yeah, I reached out to them and you know, I think that's part of the risk for a lot of people is like, it, it, pe most people aren't going to come to you and ask you like, Hey, do you want to come right for this site? Or do you want to work for us? You really have to put yourself out there and kind of work your way up. Yeah, exactly. I got lucky with um, Fighting Chance Fantasy because Ryan, who used to own Fighting Chance, came and asked me if I wanted to write because I that had never crossed my mind. And I think it's it's good to know that, like, keep your eyes peeled on Twitter because sites, small sites, big sites, in between sites, they're always asking, you know, somebody's interested, hit us up. So definitely good advice. Um, and And you've written for a few different spots. Is that correct? Yeah, I've been... I've been all over the board, <laughs> all over the board. <laughs> for, for a ton. Jack yeah, so it started with 
it started with uh, TFA, the Fantasy Authority. At the same time, also started working a little bit with Dynasty Nerds. Um, and then from there, kind of branched off, started writing for the Ballers, was still writing for our own website when we had one with Red Shirts Fantasy. Now we're with Ball Blast, and I'm writing there. And of course, I'm writing more than I ever thought I would with the Ballers. So yes, uh, if usually if I'm not working or spending time with uh, my wife and my dog, who I treat like a child, I'm usually writing or podcasting. So that's that's my life right now. No, <laughs> that's, that sounds like everybody's life that I've talked to so far, and I'm sure in the future, too. Um, and so that kind of brings me to a set of questions that I ask everybody when they start bringing up family and things of that nature. Um, how, how do you find time to balance it all? Because I know that's another thing that kind of crossed not only my mind, but a lot of people's minds when they first started out in, the, in this whole industry, quote unquote. Um, how do you how do you kind of balance that out and kind of make it so that you don't feel like stressed about one thing or trying to like spend family time or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's tough. And I'm the type of person that, um, at one of my weaknesses is just like taking on too many things at once. That's like something that I'm not good at saying no to. So, um, if someone says like, Hey man, you mind just like, give me some advice on this injury. I will like make a note to be like, all right, I'm going to go back and answer that person's question when I have time. So I, one of my weaknesses is filling my plate with too many things at once. And so I've learned over the years to like start to kind of put some <laughs> different emphasis and priority on certain things. Um, but I mean, without what my wife allows me to do and like just the freedom that she gives me to like do my thing. And she knows like this makes me happier than anything. And my passion is this without that. I mean, I would just be like this, this, this husband that's like, <laughs> dude, get a life. Like, why are you not spending time with me? Come on. Like, you, you know. So you really do have to kind of prioritize that. But I think it's so important to have that person in your life that allows you to be that person and to do those things. And so I've been lucky. I'm fortunate with that. But at the same time, too, you know, you have to be willing to like sacrifice a couple hours of sleep here and there and wake up super early on Saturday to finish an article or whatever it is. So, yeah, you, ha you really have to kind of push the boundary, so to speak, because to be honest with you, like the industry is just it's so watered down with with content there's a lot of people and so it's really tough to kind of make your name in this space but to do it you really have to grind and like put yourself out there exactly yep that's true i'm gonna make my wife listen back to these podcasts because she can see <laughs> that people have supportive spouses <laughs> no. there you go there you go what time's your podcast tonight Ugh. but yep. yeah i mean but I, I love hearing it i love hearing what you guys have to say about that because i feel like one of my hardest things and trying to do all of this stuff is finding the time to do it all. Um, so yeah, you do have to have a, a nice balance there. Um, so you said your wife's very supportive. How, how do you, the rest of your family and friends feel about what you do? Are they like, Oh my gosh, this is the guy I have to go to for fantasy advice. Or are they like, whatever it is? <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is always funny because it's, it's, I hate saying it, but uh, last year, was kind of the first year that like a lot of my friends that like i you know still keep in touch with like my best friends from high school my best friends from college but like other people that like i don't really talk to as much anymore from high school or from college will just like see my name randomly on this thing and they're like dude i didn't know you did that or i didn't know you wrote for them or i didn't know you did this podcast and so people are starting to learn more and more and so as a result i'm getting more texts and messages like hey man what should i do <laughs> is this trade good or not and then i also on top of that being a physical therapist get a lot of the, hey, my knee hurts, what should I do sort of thing. So I'm getting a yeah. lot of that from both sides. And then on top <laughs> of that, playing in a league with people at work, I, I will never hear the end of this. I came in second to last last year in my work league. <laughs> and they're like, dude, aren't you on a podcast? Don't you know what you're doing? Like, what what is this? So it, it's it really you, you kind of get a lot of attention in different directions, but all for all for good fun and good reason. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just joined a work league this year and I'm like getting so much crap because I'm doing so bad. I'm like, oh, my players got hurt. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. About it. And they're just making this wasn't fun of part me. of the plan, <laughs> but I don't have a fallback. So I don't have my friends texting me about how their knees hurt and stuff, but it's yeah. not going to get worse for you the older we get. So <laughs> good luck. Very true. Very true. Um, you know, so you are all over the place and 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 you have 
so much going on, but you're very active on Twitter and you're very active with the community. I see you doing good things with other people who are, you know, in the same boat we are where, you know, we're not the big, big names, but we're out here trying to, you know, do work like you were talking about grinding and everything. How important do you think the Twitter fantasy community is to building each other up and, and spreading the word about other people? Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, I, like I said at the start, like I don't know of another platform or like social media space that even exists that does this for anything else. Maybe there is, maybe I just don't know. But yeah, it's 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 awesome. I mean, it, you come across one or two people maybe a year that you're like, you're not really doing this for the right reasons or maybe you're not kind of the right fit for the community. But there's just this like sentiment that like, if you want to do this, you better be a good person. You better promote other people's work because that's really what it's all about. And, you know, people ask me all the time, like, hey, you want to come on my show and do this? Sure. Hey, you want to come on my show and, and help out, too? So, yeah, it, it goes both ways. And it's just such a great place to interact with smart people who know what they're talking about, but also are good people. So, yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, I would have never seen like a job posting or an article that, um, you know, hey, we're looking for writers or we're looking for this without Twitter. So it, it's huge. And if anyone's not on fantasy Twitter, that's the place to be. I mean, you got to check it out. And there's also, you know, that if you're like serious about DFS and gambling and, and fantasy football, like that's where the news breaks first. And then you get the Roto World blurb like four minutes later or five minutes later. So it actually does help a ton with those sort of things as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I completely agree with that. And there are so many new people that are getting involved in it as well. Um, every day, you know, you see a couple new accounts here and there. And it's it's really cool to see it grow like that. When you first started out in the fantasy football community, was it like that or has it just started blowing up for you and for everybody else that you see on your timeline? Yeah, I think it was pretty similar at the time. I mean, I've only been doing this for what, four years, -ish, four ish years now. And um, yeah, at the time, like I was just a just another guy on Twitter. But <laughs> yeah. uh, if you interact with enough people and they kind of show you like I don't want to make this kind of sound weird, but like the etiquette of Twitter, you know what I mean? Like you'll build a following and you'll, you'll meet good people that will help you get there. And so, yeah, it's kind of the same as it was back then that um, there's a lot of people, but it's easy to carve out space in this industry and on Twitter, especially if you're interacting with good people who promote good work. And there's a ton of people that do that. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it, Twitter is so amazing. And you had brought this up earlier about how you don't really even, know these people you've never met them you don't know you know what's going on there is there anybody in the fantasy football community that you haven't talked to or that you'd like to meet someday that's somebody that you kind of look up to you know per se yes that is a really <laughs> interesting question and i wasn't really prepared for this so i'm glad you kind of sprung it on me but the first name that comes to mind is, is tags mike taglier over at fantasy pros like i've never talked to him i've i probably like tweeted back and forth at him like once or twice over the years, but he just seems like such a good dude and like knows his stuff. And every time I've heard him on a podcast, especially there was a series that he did um, with Nick. I don't remember Nick's last name. I think it's Earl Earl Cano Earl. If it's BDG, yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, Nick, for butchering your name. I, but yeah, that's I, I, I do They did an interview together over the the off season and. Uh, Nick interviewed Mike and he was like, Hey man, like, how did you get into this space? And Mike is just like all of us, like yeah. worked his butt off to get there, was mm -hmm. working like two jobs to try to make it happen. Like, you know, working overtime, essentially like into the night to try to write articles and all that sort of stuff. And it's just so inspiring. And he seems like a great person. So Mike, if you're listening, uh, let's hang out. <laughs> Mike, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he does seem like a good dude. Um, there are so many of these big guys in this industry and gals in this industry that are just they were they were in our shoes at one point or another. So it's really cool to see that. Like tomorrow, I'm going to be talking to Matthew or Matt Harmon, and um, nice. you know, same same kind of thing. You know, so we, we all have to start somewhere, and then we get to where we are, and then we just keep on trying and grinding. Um, and and I really like. I hate calling people brands, but I feel like you you're kind of a brand too. Like you have your, you know the medical side, but you're also like super smart when it comes to just fantasy football in general. So, so it's really nice to see that um, and to stick out like that since you're so, you know, you're so branded quote unquote, if I'm going to use that word again, um, what kind of advice do you have to people who are like, want to, you know, get 
recognized on on the level that at least we are right now. Um, but they're not so sure how to be original or to be different than the other, you know, stats here and this is that and this is that. Yeah, that's that's the tricky part. Anyone can look at a, a you know a box score or a list of rankings or whatever it is, whatever you know stat you want to use and talk about it. Anyone can do that, but you have to be able to be different than the person sitting next to you and the person sitting next to them because, like we said earlier, the space is watered down with talent and good talent. But you know, I think we're reaching a point where there's a ton of consumption of like these big names. You know, people are reading articles on ESPN and they're reading articles on CBS and all those sort of things. And I'm not downplaying that. Like that's, that's great. But if you want to kind of get to the point where you're known in this space and, and I'm talking like I'm there, I'm not like, I'm just, I'm just a guy that's talking to a microphone and no. writing articles. <laughs> but we, if you want to try to build that kind of thing, you have to bring your own voice. You have to be unique. You have to be willing to put yourself out there and you have to just be yourself. Like that's, that's really what it comes down to. Um, I early on, like if you listen to me on a show, like I was trying to be like really funny, really cool. Like just, I sounded so awkward. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> and once you kind of go back to being yourself and just kind of having that voice and being, you know, your own, your own person, your own like unique way, it works out for you in, in and of itself. So it's, it's kind of patience plus understanding. Don't try to be someone you're not. And I was trying to be really super funny and like really outgoing and like all the, you know, crazy stuff. And it just sounded yeah. silly. So, so just be yourself. Yeah. And, and, and that is hard to do sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I is. find myself, really is. I find myself, you know, overthinking things sometimes as well and, and trying to be something that I'm not when I'm talking, like uh, even this being the third episode, I feel like I'm still, you know, trying to get into it all. And I'm usually more crazy and whatever, but I, I really, but sitting down and actually getting to listen to you guys when I'm talking to you and, and kind of hear your insight on it, because we're all in the same place, but I like to hear other people's journeys and, and to hear that everybody's kind of gone through the same kind of thing is really helpful for those of us or for those who are trying to get into the industry that just aren't there yet. Um, when you started, um, since uh, some of the people that are listening to this podcast, like I really want to get people involved in fantasy football and wanting to put out content. When you got started, um, were there resources that you were looking at to kind of like not maybe not model yourself after but that kind of guided you in the right direction or did you just kind of go into it blindly and hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i feel like my situation is a little bit unique in that mm -hmm. um i was able to kind of put myself out there as someone that could bring something to the table that not that many other people could. And so, you know, having that kind of sports injury history, seeing these injuries in the clinic on a day-to-day -day basis was, was an easy selling point for myself that people were like, oh yeah, you're way different than the next guy that wants to write for us. So like, let's do it. And so I kind of feel lucky in that aspect. But if I'm talking about anyone else that's given me kind of that guidance or at least like the platform to do it, I mean, it's Stefania Bell. Like she's a physical therapist. She is so, 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 so smart. I've had the, the pleasure of having her on our show and I've talked with her on other podcasts before. And she just like is the she she knows how to bring it from being really, really smart. And to be honest, you smarter than people listening to you, but still making it relatable and easy to understand. And that really to me, like hearing her on the ESPN Fantasy Focus show, reading her articles, I was like, yes, this makes sense. Like it doesn't have to be rocket science. It doesn't have to be super difficult to understand why a player is going to miss two weeks with this hamstring injury or whatever it is. So I've, I would say she was probably the one that kind of, without really even knowing, helped to kind of give me a path to, to do this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she is definitely the first person that pops into your head whenever you think of this kind of kind of thing. Um, yeah, and I've seen her before um, at the National Fantasy Football Convention. Super awesome. Up there giving all kinds of advice. It's crazy. I, I can't even imagine being that smart about anything. Um, <laughs> so when you're talking to uh, people who come to you for advice, so if, like listening to your podcast or even asking you questions on Twitter or whatever, how do you manage talking to the casual fantasy football fan versus like the person who's like way out there, crazy, Ah, so many numbers, letters, words that I can't pronounce. Like, how, <laughs> how, do, how do you balance? Because I know that if you're too easygoing and too, quote unquote, dumb it down, then the people that are 
the higher up guys that are in a million leagues are going to be like, what are you doing? Like, like they do with all the big name guys like Matthew Barry and stuff. How do you, yeah. how do you make sure that you can balance it where you sound like I'm giving you good advice, but at the same time, like I'm making sure that you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, that is, that's the million dollar question because to be honest with you, the, the analysis Matthew Barry gives, like most people give him a hard time, but you have to remember, like, this is a very small part of our country and small part of the world <laughs> playing fantasy football that are like truly um, nutty about this thing. Like, it's a very, very small percentage. Most people want to know because they're working nine to five jobs and they're super busy and they have kids and they have all these things. They just want to know, is this guy a good start or not? And should I pick this guy up off waivers or not? And so what he is doing, what are these other like big name brands are doing is correct. Like, that is what we want for the casual fantasy football player. But if you kind of zoom in on this like intense group that we have here, then this this crowd wants more. And so it really depends on what your audience is. And some people do a great job of marketing to that type of player. Like, for example, give a shout out to the guys over at Establish the Run. Um, they are targeting themselves to a group of people who are just absolutely nutty about fantasy football that want the specific details. They're serious DFS players. They play in high stakes leagues. Like they are the people that want every single stat you can even imagine and they want it. And then there's other people that if they read that, they'd be like, what am I even looking at? Like, I have no idea what this is. So they're, they've done a great job of like removing themselves from like the big, like casual players. They want the serious players and it works for them. They've done a great job with it. But if you try to be somewhere in the middle, I, I feel like you kind of get lost. And so, you know, for us over at Ball Blast and on the Baller Show, it's to be honest with you, it's like 60 percent entertainment and like 40 percent stats and stuff like that. So we try to, to target ourselves towards the casual players, but also want to win. You know, it's not just like, oh, like, hopefully I can set my lineup Sunday morning. Like, Let's find out what happens. <laughs> We're kind of somewhere in the middle, more towards the casual people. But you really have to figure out your target audience if you're podcasting or writing and try mm -hmm. to market it towards that group. I like it. The entertainment value is so important on podcasts, yes. especially yes. because you're listening to this podcast on your way to work or while you're at work or while you're doing chores or whatever, you kind of want to escape from reality and you want to laugh and you want to have a good time. And it's really cool to see you interact with like your co-host and everything because you guys all feed off feed each other. And I know you talked about like the first couple of episodes being kind of, I got to learn how you talk and how we do things and so on and so forth. What do you, if somebody decides to do a podcast and they want to have a co-host, what would you, what kind of advice would you give to those people who are out looking for a co-host? Because I know that sometimes you listen to a podcast and the co-hosts don't really mesh and then you're like, eh, do I want to give it another shot? So what kind of suggestions do you have? I know that not all the co-hosts were somebody that like, you just were like, Hey buddy, you want to come do a podcast with me? Sometimes you're just kind of put into the situation, but how would you make that a little bit easier for people? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is just kind of like, getting to know the person before you actually get on the mic with them is mm -hmm. step one for sure so have a conversation like hey man what do you like to do for fun or like what do you do for work or any any of that sort of stuff helps to kind of break the break the ice so to speak and then i would recommend to people and we did not do this when i first started and i, I regret doing it is like going through just a practice podcast like just fake it you know get on the mic record it so you can listen back to it and kind of figure out where you can improve but don't release it don't publish it yet like just go through a show and that just makes things feel way less weird when you know all right if i mess up or if i stutter or if i like mispronounce a player's name no one's gonna come yell at me for it like i can just do it and it's fine and so that helps you to kind of create the chemistry with your co-host early but then also get out the the pre-game jitter so to speak i like it um, it might sound weird, uh, me doing a solo podcast, but I kind of do that with myself in the car. I turn the radio off and kind of just like try to come up with questions and then put a nice little pause, pretend that somebody's answering and then ask another question. And uh, uh, now it sounds weird now that I'm talking about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, the advice that you just gave is awesome. Listening to yourself back isn't always the coolest thing in the world. I know you were talking about your voice earlier and listening to yourself talk and everything. I hate doing it myself, like editing a podcast. I'm like, uh, like, who is that person? <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why? Um, was that something you had to get over, by the way? Like, did you just have to be like, you know what? Whatever. I'm just not going to listen. And hopefully everybody yeah. likes it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, early on, like, 
I was doing it to more learn about like, all right, what did I, what can I do better? How can I be less nervous and just kind of put myself out there as a more comfortable conversation? Cause that's what podcasting is. Like you have to have a gift for just talking to someone and there's no video for most things. I mean, YouTube is becoming more popular. Periscope's obviously way more popular and those sort of things. But if you're just, someone needs to listen to you in their car on the way to work or rather going on a run or whatever, you have to just be able to have that kind of like verbal um, communication skill that puts you out there and makes you like express your emotions and passions and all these sort of things in a way that you just can't replicate by like practicing it. Like you, you have to just do it. <laughs> and until you go through the reps and kind of get through it, you have to really practice and learning like through the, the first few times I did it helped by listening back to it. But nowadays, I mean, unless there's something that I really want to reference, especially for uh, the ballers DFS show, which Kyle and I record on Wednesday nights just because scheduling is crazy for us and early is on Fridays. But if like I'm setting lineups on Saturday, I'll go back and be like, oh, I know I talked about Terry McLaurin at minute four or what, you know, whatever it is and go back and listen to it again. But outside of that, I don't listen to myself and I just assume that I sound good for the future. <laughs> it's probably not true. <laughs> do you, do you listen to other podcasts and kind of get ideas from how the cadence of people talking or, you know, Oh, they say a lot of ums now because I, I know I say a lot of ums or whatever, you know, do you find yourself now if that you're listening to podcasts being like, Oh, you know, maybe I'll try that sometime or, Oh, I just noticed something that <laughs> isn't so great. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, like, Early on, it was so easy to look past that stuff and be like, did I say the right stat or did I say the, the right player's name or, you know, whatever. And nowadays, when I listen to other people's podcasts, I'm not really worried about the content. And that sounds silly because we're listening to these shows probably initially to be like, oh, I need to get a, an edge on my league mates. How do I do this? How do I win in fantasy? But then you like you get attached to these co-hosts and you want to be able to be like relatable you want to listen to what they say because you you genuinely care about their opinion and you genuinely genuinely care about what they are saying. Not is the is the terminology correct or is the stat correct? None of that stuff matters because at the end of the day, football is a weird sport. The yeah. ball turns in a funny way, and we're here to have fun and listen to people talk about football in an entertaining way. And so, yes, I, when I listen back to podcasts, I will I'll to, like zoom in on be like, oh my gosh, that was so funny, or that person's cadence was great on that, that segment, or whatever it is. And and that really, to me, is kind of what I digest from shows. And mm -hmm. that, to me, is way more important as a consumer of this brand and, and as this kind of industry than the actual like nugget of, of the stat that the person just said. Excellent. That's how I feel, too. Um, listening back to, to podcasts, like even if I hear somebody say the wrong name, I'm like, whatever, it happens. And like, that's another thing, yeah. too. Like, you just have to go with it and just, you know. Be yourself, and if you mess up, you mess up. It's not the end of the world. People aren't going to be all up, up in arms about it, although there are some people that get up in arms. And ha ha Have you ever had to deal with any trolls on Twitter or people that are like coming at you like, the advice you gave me is wrong? Yeah. I mean, and everyone <laughs> does. And everyone the does. The person that comes to mind, I'm... <laughs> So this season, I'm ranking for Fanball, which is another uh, DFS site. And I write up about two to three sentences on every player in the top 20 at their position. And I was getting to, to today, I was doing this in the rankings. I was getting to like RB 21, 2, 3. And I was looking at Joshua Kelly and I was like, should I put him in the top 20? Like he's been fine. And he had a really good couple of weeks at the beginning of the season. But Justin Jackson outplayed him last week. And so I was kind of debating. But the moral of the story here is after week two, I put out a tweet and I don't know why everyone reacted to this, but I put it out and I said, Joshua Kelly needs to be in your starting lineup this week. And that was the tweet. That was it. And I got like 500 likes and like 90 replies and like 47 retweets. And I was like, why is everyone so worried about Joshua Kelly? Like, I don't understand. And of course <laughs> he comes out and he puts up a freaking dud and does nothing. And the next day, Monday and Tuesday, I had a ton of people that were like, you know, what are you doing? Like what, why would you say that all these and sort of things and probably things that were not as nice, but you ignore it and you just move on because it mm. sounds silly because it's kind of a cliche, but truly this sport of fantasy football or this game is processed over results, right? Weird stuff's going to happen, right? Like you can't predict when Kenny and Drake's going to rip off a 69 yard run for a touchdown on Monday night football and cause you to lose a week. You cannot predict that. So it's all about process over results and doing it in, in an entertaining way. Uh, yeah. Yes, that does happen to literally every single person that puts themselves out there. 
It really does. And and you're you're correct. Like you can listen to the big name guys and they're not going to hit all the time. It's it, it's hard. We don't have a a crystal ball in front of us to tell us exactly what's going to happen or else we'd be like super rich and people would <laughs> <laughs> people would be following by the dozens on uh, on a daily basis. But um yeah, I, I get that and and everybody does have those those trolls and you kind of just have to like be like whatever. But I also know that sometimes people are I've talked to a few people actually in my DMs who are like, I'm kind of scared to jump into the fantasy football community or be a part of the industry because I don't want to give advice and then it'd be wrong. What do you have to say to people like that who are like, I really, I, I know a lot of stuff I want to write about. It's fun, but I'm scared that people are going to be upset with me because I didn't get it right. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for that is just knowing that that is part of what this is. Mm -hmm. is being wrong like if you're right 60 percent of the percent of the time that is good that's what we want um you know there's every season like we fall in love with these players in august and by like october 1st you're like should i drop this guy but meanwhile <laughs> five weeks ago you were drafting him in the third round right like it happens every single year to every single person that writes or talks about football so um thinking that you're the only one that's going to have that happen to them is definitely not correct this season i was a full full fade on keenan allen i did not want him on any roster and now the dude's balling and i traded for him in a dynasty league two days ago because i was like crap i was wrong so yes it happens to everyone and thinking that maybe you're going to be judged for it or people are going to come back at you for it um, it doesn't happen all that often most people understand that this game is about calculated risk not being able to predict the future 100%, 100%. And plus, a lot of the time, you'll get tagged in a, a question with like 10 other people. So, <laughs> so, yeah, sure, somebody will be right. And then, you know, the rest <laughs> of you will be wrong. It just happened. You know? And it, if you choose to come to me for advice, then cool. If not, then, you know, whatever. You're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't really talked to you too much about actually being involved in fantasy football. Are you, what kind of leagues are you involved in? Is there, is it straight one type of league or do you have a bunch of different ones that you're involved in? Oh, too many leagues. That is for sure. I think next year <laughs> I'm going to try to dial it back. Um, you know, the thing that everybody hear, says. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you hear this on <laughs> other shows where they tell you like, if your Tuesday night is, filled with stress because you're like i don't have time to look through 10 waiver wires to figure out who i'm going to add and drop you're in too many leagues and i am in that boat this year so it's not really even um the fact that it's kind of too many redraft leagues i play in like three or four of those one with um you know local friends a couple industry leagues with writers and then as well uh, a work league but outside of that i was like so so into dynasty the last three ish years and then COVID happened and the offseason there was like, all right, there's nothing to do. Like, let's draft another startup. So I joined two leagues this year, which I should not have done. And so I definitely overextended myself as far as that's concerned. But I think I'm going to dial it back next year, if at all possible. Try to resist the, the urge when someone asks me to join a startup and just focus a lot more on DFS, which I found a new passion for that in this season and doing the research for it. And that's to me has been uh, the joy of my week is like researching and learning how to prep my lineup for that week. It hasn't been worrying about like, oh, should I trade a third for this rookie prospect from four years ago that I maybe hope pans out? And that was different for me three years ago. But I play in all all sorts of leagues with people that are like hardcore like us and your casual work league people that are just trying to figure out how do I not um, how do I not lose this week and make sure I, be, I don't get fun of made fun of at work. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> where it's like, I'm sorry that I lost and don't make fun of me because yeah. <laughs> COVID, what are you, what are you going to do? Um, so I just want to hit on a couple more things real quick before, before we say goodbye, sadly. Um, so sad. with the, I know it is sad. I really enjoy talking to you. Um, the DFS thing is one of those things that I know DFS is a big thing, but there's not as much content. Like if I was just a casual person looking at stuff, there's not, a ton of DFS content. Can you tell me a little bit about the fantasy footballers and the DFS pass and everything that's going on over there? Because I know that you're big, bigly. I was going to say bigly. Please don't say bigly. I know that you're really involved over there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Can you tell me? <laughs> this is what we talked about, right? This is what we talked about. Saying something wrong on the podcast um, and feeling totally cool with it. And this is what happens. 
<laughs> it happens. It's been a day. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, can you tell me a little bit, though, and tell everybody that's listening just more about what's going on with the fantasy footballers and DFS over there? Yeah, for sure. So uh, there's about five of us that contribute to the DFS Pass, which is um, a subscription. It's a one-time payment. It's $59.99 for the entire season. And if you bought the UDK, which a lot of people do, you can upgrade for like a super cheap price. And, you know, the goal is not to make this a product that's like premier and that everyone has to pay $200 for a season. Like we're trying to make it affordable and easy to digest because we all know that people want to play DFS. It's a really, really growing, you know, kind of small segment of the industry that's now becoming huge. And people want to know how to play on FanDuel and DraftKings, etc., but they don't have a ton of money to spend on like these high end subscriptions. And so what we're doing with the fantasy footballers is putting it, putting out a product that is still going to, you know, it's still behind a paywall. So it's not saying that it's for free, but it's at least easy to afford for a lot of people. And it's easy to understand and digest. It's not super overwhelming. We'll give you our FanDuel picks or, or DraftKings picks. Uh, Kyle writes up the best wide receiver cornerback matchups. I write up the Vegas kind of, you know, preview, like, what games do you want to target in DFS this week and those sort of things. And so we try to make it more of a, you know, the, the slogan we use is like DFS for the rest of us. We're, we're trying to make it easy for everyone to play because it's more fun when you have more people involved in DFS. So that's kind of the, the aim behind it. But I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I, I can't recommend it enough. I was still reading the content and subscribing to it even before I was even on staff. So um, it's something that I've, I've used and bought into years ago. That's so awesome. And I, and that was so awesome to see it be a part of, you could, you know, add it on with um, the ultimate draft kit, kit over there and everything. So much resources, so many things. And, and the podcast that you and uh, Kyle do is just a world of knowledge. Like it's, it, I couldn't recommend it enough to people that are playing DFS. Um, before, uh, before you go, I got one last question. Um, when you watch games, let's say the Sunday, when you're watching games are, are you so focused on do you have fun and just watch the games or do you watch them and see, oh, oh, somebody got injured. I got to go look that up. How How is watching football with Matthew on a Sunday? Oh, man. It depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is funny. So uh, I will actually like if I'm getting up to get a drink or if I'm going to go get like food for lunch or something while the game's drawn, I will uh -huh. literally pause the TV. And I will come back and I will play it so that I do not miss a single play. Like I am such a fiend for football that I genuinely want to see every single play because, again, I started out super casual and I was just like, yeah, who's going to score the most points this week? That's all I care about. But now, like, again, looking through the DFS lens and kind of understanding more about football, like I care about Taylor Luan putting a huge block on a defensive lineman or George Kittle having the best block ever against a, a linebacker. Like I want to see that. And so. I truly have a passion for just football and being consumer of football that I want to see as much of, of it as possible. But yes, because of my kind of unique lens in this space of looking at the in, the injuries, if a player goes down, like I'm looking to see how did it happen? Sometimes I'll replay the play. Sometimes I'll look on Twitter, like what are other people saying about this? So it has taken away a little bit of the, you know, put your phone away and just like chill out on the couch and watch football for me. But at the same time, I remind myself like, I'm super lucky to just even be writing about football in general that it's totally fine and, and I love it. So yeah, it's sometimes it's filled with stress. Sometimes it's filled <laughs> with happiness when the Eagles are good, which this year were horrible. So there's a lot of stress on Sunday well, you don't have for to that worry. reason, but, we're all, but it's, all, the it's all good. We're all, we're all horrible. Oh, yeah, and like man, Cowboys, are you a, you're a Cowboys fan? Yeah. Oh, it's who's, who's going to actually win the division this year. I don't understand. That is, you guys need to put some money on somebody. I don't know. I, we'll figure it out <laughs> i don't know who and, i and wish i could help <laughs> they always say the nfc least but like this year really feels like it i don't yes. know it's it's a mess um well now that i know who you like that was going to be my last question was which team do you like but you're an eagles fan okay okay eh, most now, of you're, now you're judging <laughs> well I, i've got a lot of family up in pennsylvania so they're all eagles fans except for my dad who's a cowboys fan so there's that. Oh, um, <laughs> well, it was really awesome getting to talk to you. Like I haven't really sat down with you and actually got to talk to you ever. So this was really rad. Um, can you just go ahead and plug everything and let everybody know where to find you and so on and so forth? 
Yeah, for sure. I really appreciate it, Casey, like coming on the show and just talking to you and like I said, getting to know you better. Um, I'm super excited to hopefully sit down again in the future and talk. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's so much more that I can talk to you about. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at the fantasy PT. Lots of injury stuff on there. Lots of DFS type stuff. Try to be funny every once in a while, but it's mostly good content. And then you can find all my work uh, over with Ball Blast Football. Uh, there's an injury tracker on the website that I kind of go through and just let people know like this person's out. This person's questionable. This person was limited in practice, all that good stuff. So it's in one place. Um, podcasting with Okada on the Red Shirts Dynasty podcast, which you can find anywhere you get your podcasts. And then, of course, lots and lots and lots of work with the fantasy footballers writing up a weekly injury article, uh, a couple of DFS articles, and then doing the DFS podcast with them as well. And this season, on top of all that stuff, somehow <laughs> I have extra time. <laughs> to do uh, an injury focused podcast, which is basically yeah. what you need to know to get ready for the weekend, um, which is for everyone that subscribes over at jointhefoot.com. So yeah, tons of content. You can find me pretty much anywhere uh, that you're consuming podcasts and you're getting your articles. So that's it. That's awesome. And I know that injury podcast is one that so many people are raving about. I know it's really helpful, especially coming out right before, you know, the Sunday games and everything, go back and listen to that and kind of figure out your lineup. So it's super rad that you're doing that this year. You guys really need to check out Matthew. All of the stuff that he does is, is awesome and he's a really cool dude. So yeah, check him out and uh, really appreciate you coming on the show tonight, Matthew. It, it was real fun to sit down and talk to you. Likewise, appreciate it, Casey.